this uh, next to Judy Bellow, longtime activist and organizer uh, in the Ro not just the Rochester area, but nationally. She has visited the Middle East a number of times and uh, has a lot of information about that. And we shouldn't forget that whilst there are all these distractions going on, the U.S. is continuing its war of aggression. It is, has invaded Syria. It is bombing in Syria. And people are being killed as we speak in Syria. So, uh, Judy Bell. Thank you, Dean. Um, I wanted to just uh, begin by saying that in the last couple of weeks, there's been really an uh, enormous amount of attention, and rightfully so, on domestic uh, events, uh, and that progressives and those who have abhorred the United States history of racism have had some significant victories. Uh, these were expensive victories. One woman lost her life, others were severely injured in Charlottesville. In Durham, people have been arrested and will be tried for their uh, actions. But the people of this nation have come forward, poor people, even rich people, working class people and CEOs of all things, black and white people, in opposing uh, racism here within this country, at least in the abstract. But now what we need to do is look at, uh, at the larger picture. Uh, last week at some point, Ajamu Baraka, who was the uh, um, Green Party vice presidential candidate in the last election said that when you talk about racism, you have to realize that racism is maintained by an international complex. It's maintained by the World Bank and the IMF, by the powers that control the international economy and multinational corporations. So from that point, I want to move on and say that there are wars uh, that the U.S. is fighting, and because of the way the news cycle is, we don't hear much about them, and for other reasons that I'll mention at the end of my uh, discussion. Um, but these wars are deliberately hidden from you. You are deliberately misled about what's going on in Syria, for instance. U.S. aggression around the globe is escalating, not slowing down. Because you don't hear about Afghanistan or Syria doesn't mean there's, that the United States is no longer engaged there. Uh, when you don't hear about uh, Yemen, it isn't because people aren't dying there. Uh, the U.S. is spending billions of dollars engaging in military actions uh, around the world. And American companies are making a fortune selling weapons to Saudi Arabia and the Gulf Emirates, which they use to perpetrate wars of aggression against their neighbors in the Arab Peninsula and in Northern Africa. Not only are U.S. companies uh, proliferating U.S. weapons across the Middle East, but American companies are shipping weapons from Bulgaria and Eastern Europe through various routes to terrorist or directly to terrorist organizations in Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq. In a program that's technically similar to the rendition program of the early post 9-11 period. U.S. corporations are profiting from the wars that the U.S. government has either initiated or instigated, while the devastating consequences of these wars on the people of the region are presented to us as pitiable but not actionable. Worse yet, further military intervention is the only cure ever recommended. Is that really how it needs to be? Uh, the United States is an uninvited participant in the Syrian conflict. We're not welcome there. The people are angry. They're aware of US actions that funded the terrorists that have destroyed their country. Uh, they, it's not a secret that the United States has been engaging in these activities. Just, uh, just this year, James Defense Magazine, a publication of IHS Market, one of the most uh, well, highly regarded intelligence uh, agencies, private intelligence agencies around the world, uh, published a shipping order uh, showing that 
The U.S. has been shi was shipping tons and tons of weapons into the Middle East through uh, ports in Turkey and Lebanon and Israel. Uh, a woman in Bulgaria did an investigation uh, which started because of some planes were not flying to where they were supposed to and they were making stopovers and um, she too, she found all the shipping orders and the paperwork showing that these planes were um, picking up, taking weapons from Bulgaria and dropping them off in um, Saudi Arabia, again Lebanon, Turkey, all the countries on the periphery of uh, the Syrian war. And then these uh, weapons are given to uh, the um, insurgents and to the uh, terrorists where uh, they no longer have U.S. markings because it's been a problem that U.S. weapons are obviously U.S. weapons. Uh, now the U.S. troops in Syria and Iraq are only there supposedly to, to rout ISIS. That's what President Trump has said. Uh, the U.S. has adopted a force, uh, very popular in this country, of Kurds who fight with, for them on the ground in hopes of having a sovereign state carved out of Syria. The U.S. now has at least 10 military bases in the northern part of Syria and eastern Syria where these Kurds are the, uh, in control. The people of this region are not unanimously in favor of rule by this militant faction of Kurds. And it's unclear that even a majority of them support this plan, but no one's asked them. James also published a report this spring saying that the most effective force against ISIS is the Syrian Arab army and their allies. They, sh they gave statistics and uh, facts to support this assertion. But the U.S. continues to report that the Kurds are the only effective force fighting uh, ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Both President Trump and Secretary of State Tillerson have said that we're going to leave the field in Syria as soon as ISIS has been defeated. However, the U.S. has been increasing the number of forces on the ground in that country for months, despite the fact that Syria and her allies are pretty much defeating ISIS on their own right now. Meanwhile, the one it person we do, the one entity that we do stand in a direct confrontation with is Russia. Last night, President Trump, in his speech, referred to our partnership, to our revered partnership with Saudi Arabia on the war on, in the war on terror. Saudi Arabia is the primary sponsor of terrorism in the Middle East and throughout the world. They uh, train and arm and supply manpower for terrorism in every region, in Russia, in uh, China, in um, the Middle East, in Europe. From the heady days when uh, the Saudis supported Osama bin Laden to train and mobilize forces against the Russians in Afghanistan, the same forces we are fighting now until today when they provide men, armaments, and massive funding to Al-Qaeda some elements of ISIS and other fragmented extremist forces in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Lebanon, Libya, and elsewhere, Saudi Arabia is the primary driving force behind uh, the uh, mercenary and uh, extremist forces. Two years ago, Saudi Arabia began a genocidal war against the ancient and impoverished country of Yemen with total Western support. Tens of thousands of Yemenis have died from Saudi, Saudi coalition airstrikes. And hundreds of thousands are dying of starvation and uh, treatable diseases uh, while there's a um, siege enforced not only by the Saudis, but by their Western allies. US and allied forces have ships sitting in the Arab Sea 
to this day, making certain that no aid comes into Yemen that isn't approved by their Saudi affiliates. Saudi Arabia is using the weapons we give them, not only distributing them to terrorist organizations around the Middle East, but they're using them to assault the people of Yemen. And most recently, they uh, destroyed a Shia community within Saudi Arabia. They have laid waste uh, to the city of Awamiya. Al 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 and uh, for uh, basically having what we would call peaceful protests, and I don't mean burning tires and using Molotov cocktails, I mean protests where people stood together at rallies and made speeches. The man that the Saudis claim to support with American assistance in Yemen is a man who won a single uncontested election and refused to call a new election when his time was up. When popular forces demand that he integrate them into the government, he took actions uh, that resulted in him having to flee to Riyadh under Saudi uh, Air Force uh, bombing. Just over two years ago, the United States was using drones to bomb Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula with tragic results for the Yemeni civilians living in rural communities where AQAP forces were active. Today, AQAP controls several significant port cities in Yemen and, uh, and in the east of Yemen because they are a Saudi ally on the ground. And while the United States occasionally bombs them with a drone attack, killing civilians while they're at it, uh, basically they're fighting under the umbrella of American protection of the Saudi initiative. You may not agree with my interpretation of the events I'm reporting here, and you may not be aware of some of them and wonder if I'm telling you the truth. But there's no open discussion of these realities and others like them in the mainstream news. Open discussion occurs on the websites now censored from public view uh, by Google, technology, and also by public shaming. Hotspots show up in the mainstream news for a headline and then disappear. And their zeal to protect us from fake news, our uh, press and our government, uh, and the most uh, utilized search engines on the internet now specifically exclude websites where conversations can take place outside the approved agenda. Both right and left leaning sites are affected. Open discussion and disclosure of US activities in the world at large, including Korea and the Middle East and Ukraine and everywhere and Africa are undermined by this uh, pogrom against fake news. Can we have a democracy in a climate of censorship, I ask you? Do these conversations, often joined by experts, academics, and ex-diplomats, do they really diminish the work of reporting the news as it happens, or do they enhance it? What are our real stakes in Syria and Yemen, in Afghanistan or Korea? Do these countries not have the right to sovereignty? Do we Americans not have the right to consider these issues? If not, uh, I think we have a serious problem. But if you agree that we need to address these issues, then I hope that you will uh, look at these alternative spaces, and go down the list of the fake news websites, and check out what's being said on them, because by and large, these are honest and honorable people discussing issues that are critically important to us and to everyone in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um. <laughs>